Hey you guys, good morning, I'm Lady Anne. I'm here at Cheers to You, and I'm really excited because today, and let me see if I can um, get her, but today we're gonna have a special guest. Um, ah, I see she's calling in, hang on one second. All right, give me one second. Hang on, I'm gonna add you in. All right, good morning. Good morning, good morning. How are you? I'm not sure if she can hear. Good morning. Let's see if she's got, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? I can. can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right, how How's are you doing? Look? It looks a little blurry on my end. I wonder why. A little why. bit. Yeah, it is a little bit blurry. It could I be, uh, could... I don't know, it could be internet. Um, uh, let's see. And I'm going to add in here. Let me see who. Ah, there's Sandy. Good morning. Um, so today, and Jennifer and Tanya. Hey, you guys. So oh. I want to introduce um, Cecilia Nelson Hurt. Uh, she is also known as. Um, at creative cc on instagram and there yeah. is her handle so you guys can um, follow her on instagram um and I, I let's just dive in why don't you tell them who you are and what you do and about your uh addiction to <laughs> yarn like all the rest of us oh yes i'm 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 not even a, in a 12-step recovery i'm just gonna <laughs> The fact that I'm a yarn um, addict and I'm just going to go with that. So I am a fiber lover, uh, yarn, lo clearly yarn. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm, I'm a knitter. I first, my fiber story is I learned to do crochet from my maternal grandmother uh, who taught me how to, to crochet when I was maybe six or seven. And then I learned how to do latch hooking and make pot holders. And so really, you know, fiber was really a part of my life mm -hmm. early. Uh, and then I'm, I, I moved away from it because, you know, kids do what kids do. Uh, and then maybe 20 years ago or, or so, I was reading about a lot of celebrities who were knitting. Yeah. And it was how they did the time and Julia Roberts. And I read Friday Night Knitting Club. And I was like, this sounds so amazing. And so I went to a yarn shop. I picked up some yarn um, and a book and taught myself how to knit. I love um, it. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like you open this door, this this Pandora's <laughs> box or this <laughs> yep. to, to Wonderland. And um, then I learned about all of the New York things. So there were several um there still are a lot of yarn shops. Some over the 20 years have, have, have come and gone, but we still have a significant amount of easily accessible yarn shops. And so I learned about the shops. I learned about meetups and sit in it. And, you know, it's funny. I was just looking over photos because this would be Rhineback. We would be in Rhineback. Right, right. right. And I found pictures from 2005. Oh, my right, gosh. On my iPhone, which means I probably went 2004. Right? Oh, like, wow. You know, in my 2005 picture, I'm wearing a knitted poncho. And I'm like, I didn't know enough to come with knitted clothes to Rhineback. I probably had a scarf or something. Right. And over the years, Rhineback became, a, you know, a one day event to a two day event to a three day event. You know, like now you, sh you show up on Thursday night and there's all of the fringe events. And so I'm missing that, but I'm really, look, I'm, I'm enjoying seeing everyone's current memories of, you know, past Rhineback. Day. So you're wearing what, and you shared it with whom this morning? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm wearing my Millie sweater, which literally th th this should have been done. Like I have no no it's excuse. Gorgeous. Oh my yeah. gosh, I love it. Oh, it's so like. Hope you could see. Oh my see gosh. It. It Show the sleeve. Dome. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, the dome and sleeves, and so um, so it's the Millie sweater by Nice and Knit. And I wore it and I did, I shared it in my Tell Me About Your Rhinebacks sweater with, with Christy Glass. Mm -hmm. This morning, uh, right? This morning, yeah. Yes. So I was, <laughs> so it was like, she was done filming and I was like, I promise you, she's, she was done, I'm editing. And so, you know, I promised her she'll have it first thing this morning. And so I ran downstairs, stood in front of some red bricks. And my husband was kind enough to get up and take <laughs> <laughs> like, Yep. You <"Well>, me? <laughs> 
And um, yeah, so, and my earrings are designed by Yasmin. Oh, okay. So, They're really yeah. cool. What are they made out of? Oh, she, I, I don't know what yarn she uses, but she's so talented. Oh, they're yarn. Oh my gosh. Oh, yarn. oh yarn. wow. They're yarn. So this is, I have two pairs in pink, but she wow. has another pair for me that's closer to this color. So I'm going to go see her this afternoon and get the wow. other pair. Wow. Now, would you um, send me her information and I'll share it on the show notes. Those are really cool. Oh, please. Yes. And your sweater and everything. Like send me the whole deal and I'll put it up Absolutely. in the show notes. Absolutely. Yeah, those are cool. And, and my yarn, I should say yarn. The yarn is the collaboration between uh, Stephanie from Asylum Fibers mm -hmm. and the Brooklyn Boy Knit. So this is their brownstone, called the Brooklyn Brownstone. Ah, oh, very cool. I yeah. love the color. I love the color. I, I, I'm I'm a rose gold girl. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I mean, no, I love all colors to be honest, but I happen to be going through a mood where rose gold is my, uh, color of choice at the moment. Yeah. I love it in yarn and in other textures. It's just a really fun it's texture. It's pretty. Yeah. And it's it's almost, uh, for being a, a pinkish color, it's almost a neutral. You know, it's nice. You know, yeah, That's why I like it because it's not your, you know, there's nothing wrong with your um, Barbie pink or I don't right, know what the, right, right. you know, the, 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 the softer pink or even a neon pink. Like I, right. I love well or a good blush. But there's something about the rose gold, the the copperness of it. Yeah, yeah, it's really pretty, and that's a mohair that's held together with a fingering weight. So, yeah. it's so this pretty. is pretty, and it has a little sparkle to it. I don't know if you can see I it. Love it. Then I played a game of yarn chicken and lost. Mm, yeah, we chatted about that last night. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yep. yeah. So, um, and then so I had so I had happened to have some uh, Chelsea yarn. And so she had a pink and I blended it. So it looks good. It looks good it's it's I fun. Think, so I we think, have a we have a question, a very important question, because some people sign on and they've they've just started knitting or they've they don't okay. know about these things. So two things. Um, the question was, what is Rhinebeck? But then I want you to also tell them where you are and where you live. OK, so Rhinebeck and really, uh, you know, it's people speak in code. So Rhinebeck is the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. That's mm -hmm. the formal New York Sheep and Wool Festival. It's held every third weekend in October, October in, yeah. Rhinebeck, in Rhinebeck here in, in, in New York. So it's like driving north. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. So imagine, you know, all the yellows, reds, and golds of the season. Um, and it's, you know, it's an, it's an, I guess it's a, Farm. I mean, I guess it's not farm. It's like a really big. It's uh, rural, farm. isn't it? I mean, it's pretty yeah, like it's very rural. Yeah, it's rural, and they have these massive barns, right? And the uh. barn, and so the barns have several stalls on either side, and you know, there's at least twelve, if not more, because I know that the barns go up to number twenty-four, but I haven't figured out oh, okay. if there really are twenty-four barns, right? Maybe. Right. And so and so and many of the barns have, you know, so all the barns have stalls mm -hmm. and in the stalls are all of the fiber things that you would need. So yarn, so indie dyers and all the accessories, bags and so something for everyone. Yeah. But it's also a proper autumn fall event with animals. And so the animals do their own little parade. It's not really a parade. They, they, they walk the animals, which becomes right. a parade. Right. All of the, you know, from sheep to llamas and rabbits and just everything that you would get. And so there, there are competitions as well mm -hmm. for the animals. Uh, and then a couple of the barns have, you know, um, local wine and cheese and other things. And so it's truly. Ooh, I a, love that. I didn't realize that. Oh. Yeah, and then tons of food. Yeah. Tons of food. Oh my gosh. One of the highlights is there's, you know, at the top, well, there's there's a couple of hills. So there's the main hill, right. which is a meetup spot. So Ravelry for years has done the 12 o'clock meetup. And so everybody knows to be there for the, and that's turned into the 12 o'clock meetup for Ravelry, the podcaster meetup, the, I knit this, you know, I, we, we all <laughs> made our, 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 our Dana's last year with, with, with Bayron. And so we all had our right. hat so many uh, uh, different things. And then the other hill is near the food, and that is the apple cider donut. Oh, that sounds real. You know, I've never had one. I've actually, 
I, I know. I'm sorry. Okay. I just admitted that to the whole world. I've never had one. You need to have. Listen, and uh, honestly, you have to have. It's like a whole, a whole schematic of how you know you and your friends, because you know you you go with at least yeah one other, if not four or five, seven other friends. Right. And someone stands in line because the apple cider line is a good hour. Oh my gosh! And they're made fresh there, like they're they're. That's the problem because they're, oh. they're so they're making them. That's they're killing the me. Oh. So, so as you go, that you see them coming off the little conveyor thing once they're done, and so of course you wait an hour. What do you do? You buy a dozen. <laughs> Why? Who buys two apple cider donuts? They're hot. I feel I'm learning from the best here, so that when so I do get to go, them. yeah. So you buy a dozen, you eat one or two there, and then you know you share. Or what I've heard other people do, I haven't done. You take them home and then you make something with the donut. What? What do you mean? Like what? Like a coffee cake or cinnamon rolls. Oh my like god! Donut. Oh. You, you basically up upskill or up whatever. Oh, whatever they call you it, repurpose like. a donut. I who would have thought of that? Really oh. smart crafters. Oh my, you just root, like, I love, I do, I, I'm gaga over yarn. I love it. But when you said apple cider donuts, oh, oh wow. Okay. So the, 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 uh, the other stall is the fresh made hot kettle corn popcorn. All right. So my wife is watching and I know right now, like I, I try to keep us, um, I try to keep, I suggest that we not constantly eat bread and donuts and stuff because it just doesn't always end well. But yes. I'm thinking that she is, um, she said it sounds like home to her up there. So oh, I'm thinking we need to go. It is a proper fair. Oh really God, proper. yeah, okay. The food, the food is just, you get you get to pick. There's like so much good food. So besides, you beer? know. Do they have beer? Of course, well, do they have beer? I don't know. I know they have, hot cider okay she's a beer so, person so i know you can have hot cider or hot chocolate and i know you can buy wine in the wine booth so like <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> wow i have never had ice wine until oh, i was gosh. there was so amazing and then, i'm just making myself sad <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so because of the pandemic, this, and I, you know, obviously I've been aware of Rhinebeck every year, but have not with a shop, it's a little hard to right. get yeah. away. So, um, always wanted to go. I would love to go sometime, but I am aware that this weekend they're doing it virtually. Correct. Isn't that yes. right? Yeah. yeah. So tell people if they want to check it out virtually, what do they need to do this weekend? Oh my goodness. That's so, oh, there's so much. So yes, I don't know how many days she's doing it, but I know that India Untangle. Right. Which is the Lisa, right. which, which is Lisa's event, which typically mm -hmm. happens on the Friday because Rhinebeck is. I mean, I think that the Sheep and Wolf Festival starts like Thursday, Friday because they're actually classes. I've never taken a class, okay. but they're classes and other. So it's a full on experience. So in addition to that, there are other fringe events. So, so Indian Tangle is a fringe event. Um, last year. Christy Glass of, of Christy Glass Knits and and Leah Stickle of the Knitting Garage. Okay. They did a Rhymeback Bazaar oh. the day before as well. And so it's, you know, and this is where because because Rhymeback is really, you know, it's kind of like um a a a what do I want to say? Like an upper east side three bedroom apartment in Manhattan. Like you need like you're not you're not you're, you're not gonna get that, right? And so getting right. into Rhymeback is like getting into that that building. Oh because, my gosh. There's so many consistent people who come back year after year. So for these new up and coming, you know, Yasmin and, you know, and, and Stephanie of Asylum and right. Nerdbird and Shelly Can, all these other people who have not gotten into Rhineback, there are other events like the Rhineback Bazaar. And by the, getting in, you mean the vendors. So so you guys, vendors. if you want to go I mean, when it when it opens back up, go. But she's talking about for vendors who are trying to vend there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's limited space. I mean, oh so gosh. you're in the barn, you're on the side of the barns. So there's, you know, there, but there's still limited vendor opportunities. Okay. So uh, the fringe events allow up and comers to have a place to showcase their wares. So while the marketplace, if that's the term that we're going to use, right. Saturday, Sunday, having these fringe events on Friday 
having events like the after party, you know, going to Jill Draper at the end of the night. So there are all these other things that you can do. So it truly does become an experience. Ooh, that sounds like, okay. So that's on my, that's on my list. I, <laughs> I mean, being a, uh, crowds don't always do it for me. Yeah. So, yeah. um, that's a little bit of a thing, but I think if I could get there and just get, you know, well, good, I'd be okay. Crowded. Yeah. And the other thing, yes, it's crowded. Yeah. Absolutely. It's less crowded on Sunday. Okay. And so people who, you know, and every, it's like with everything, there are people who prefer to go on Sunday for that reason. It's yeah. less crowded. But for those of us who want to be like, I need to hit booth so-and-so to right. see Miss, Miss Babs or Knitting Garage. You got to go early. Yeah. You, you want to go because, again, as a vendor, it, you know, who's dying and spinning and bringing yarn, you might sell out of that color, Right. You might sell out of that thing right. on Saturday, and so it's an it's you know it's, it's a trade off, yeah. But because it is truly a fair grounds, mm -hmm. you always find some place under a tree, uh, sit down. You know, there's picnic. Uh, you can recharge there. because that's a lot of like that's a lot of activity, and that's what you. And by the middle of the day, you see people sitting along by various <laughs> fences, just relax, just, just knitting, just knitting, just sitting down and, and knitting. And, um, you know, for me being in, you know, so I, 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 I lead d d diversity during the day. Mm -hmm. And so for me, one of the things that I noticed about going to Rhinebeck was the diversity of the attendees. Oh, that's awesome. So every, I mean, again, so everything from you know not only just your craft of choice, so knitting and or because there's um, everything fiber related, right? But I mean, spinning, there's right weaving, yeah, there's the whole deal. Weaving, there's every fiber thing you you could imagine. I love it. Um, and and there's a couple of stalls that actually sell finished garments. Oh, so the, whoa, they've been right, like. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that that kind of blows my mind, but okay. Well, you know, and well, finished accessories, I should say, really. I was so, going to say, are they selling, you know, $700 sweaters? And No, no, no. Okay. But um, a few places have actual, you know, might have sweaters I think I've seen, right? Wow. But for, or at least children's things I've seen. Right, right, right. But there's two, there, this, this stall that I've gone to because there's been times when I've left my gloves at home and it's been chilly. Ah, okay. And I was very happy for the you know handmade gloves by somebody yeah else. <laughs> well and there is that actually if people are selling accessories and someone comes and they don't happen to have what they need that's actually brilliant right. so, so yeah. i have a friend who, who purchased a hat one year because she needed the hat you know i've gotten gloves on more than one occasion why can i remember to pack my gloves i don't know but um yeah so it's it's really amazing do you see um, this <laughs> and um say hello oh, to ed he's awesome we, we just Christy. love ed <laughs> The Christie Glass, and I'm and I'm never going to watch that. <laughs> Why? I don't want to know. I, I don't, well, I, I did watch it. I did watch it, and I have to tell you, I felt very reassured because the first thing she said was she she looked straight in the camera and she said, "You guys, I'm not comfortable in the kitchen." And I was like, "Holy crap! I think we're really? actually related because, really? uh, yeah, yeah." She did good though. She did a really uh, good job. Sure. Well, you know yeah. what. Christy, when she sets her mind to something, I'm always amazed. It's going to happen. How, how, I mean, really, seriously, yeah. she's such a creative person. Um, I've had the pleasure of, of visiting her um, in her home, her Aww. home, and her home just feels like it's made with love, right? She's like the knitter. She's like our Martha Stewart, right? Like the knitting community's Martha Stewart, because she's doing more than just one thing. Oh, that's a know? great way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, last year one of our friends um was expecting and we threw her a harry potter themed baby shower oh that's fun and so the, first of all the knitted gifts were out the like, i amazing. bet yeah it's actually on christie's channel so you can actually see it it's, oh um, very cool it was for danny um gemma darlings um but christy made all of the harry potter things oh so gosh. she made butter chestnut um chessmen like um, cookies with all of the oh my gosh you know, uh um house brands uh oh, she made wow. chocolate frogs she made i mean she made so many things and i mean i literally by hand she had that's the most awesome so i'm like that's why i'm like when christy said she's not good in the kitchen i'm like mm, you don't tell the whole story 
You know what she needs to do? Yeah, I was going to say, because now that what you're telling me, yeah. She's yeah. very good. Yeah. She needs to go on. And actually, um, I was dying to tell you about this. So last night we were watching the Great British Baking Show. Oh. Uh, did I have I did I t tell you about that when we no, were chatting? We shows, but that is that one I'm very familiar with, and it's another okay. one that I it's watched. Good. <laughs> it's good. Well, there's one you have to watch. So I and I will tell you right now. I have no idea what season we're in. I don't know what episode it is, but okay. it did involve um, rainbow uh, bagels. They made rainbow bagels, which ties into something you guys that we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah. Um, but one of the ladies on there, and I can't remember where she is from originally, but she brings a lot of her, um, her heritage spices and, um, flavors into her cooking, but went or into her baking. But when she took a break, what was she doing? Knitting. <gasps> she was sitting. I see now you're going to have to watch it. I love it. Now I'm going to have to. Yeah. Well, just it's look up thing. rainbow bagels. You'll find the episode, but Definitely. yeah. Nuts. Yeah. It was pretty cool. So uh, on the topic of, um, rainbows and diversity, um, tell everybody what you do when, um, you are, what you try to squeeze in between knitting times, your profession during the day. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh, I you mean the thing that I'm paid to do? <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My vote. So I, I lead, I, I'm one of the diversity leaders at, at L'Oreal. So mm -hmm. um, I'm responsible for our diversity training. So I head up the diversity training for North America or for, for the U.S., right. not Canada, although I partner with them. Um, I'm also responsible for leading our initiatives, and it's something we call social, economic, multicultural, and origins, so okay. CIMO. Right. And so under that are things like um, our LGBTQ affinity group, our employee mm -hmm. group, our women of color group, it sits under there, um, and a couple of other uh, initiatives like Parent Society and, and, and Generations and other dimensions of, of diversity. And so I really, you know, I, I love that I can, you know, bring my passion and purpose from the diversity world into the knitting world. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then with what little time I have left, I sit on several boards. Yes. And so my newest board, well, second to newest, I joined two boards this year. But one of my boards is I joined Knit the Rainbow. I'm going to show, sure. I grabbed the web address or the um, a screenshot. Oh, yeah, of, thank oh, you. That's it. Hang on, let me grab it here. Here it is. Here you go, guys. Um, this yes. is, yeah. And then also, I'm going to add this back in. This is actually the web address. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So go and visit that. I wanted to um, to check it out. And actually, you know, part of the reason that um, Cece is on here today is she reached out to me to share about this. And it was during right around the time of our yarn crawl. And I think you actually sent it to me on the Monday right after the yarn crawl. And I'm pretty sure that I was sitting in a corner, probably drooling because we, uh, it had been quite a, quite a weekend. So I missed the note until a little later, but I'm so glad that I'm glad that you've come on. So tell about the organization and what you're doing on the board and what the goals are and all of that. Absolutely. Oh my God. So much to tell. So knit the rainbow is a newly formed 5013C. I think that's the correct term, right? So it's a yep. not-for-profit um, organization or a, a community-based organization is a term yep. that I really want like to use. And so started by a young man by the name of Austin Rivers, who's so talented. He is. He's an actor, singer. Uh, he's just so super incredible. And he learned how to knit last year. Oh. He's learned to crochet. Or I might get it. Did he learn to crochet? Now he's knitting. Either way, he's being... Uh, 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 introduced to fiber. And so he um, also is finishing up his master's in policy. Oh, and wow. so realized that there was a need. And so the need is that there are 300,000 in New York alone, homeless LGBTQ youth. New York City alone, right? In New York City, City alone. City alone, okay. Not even the state, right? right. Homeless LGBTQ youth. Um, for various reasons, as you can imagine, their families have kicked them out or just don't have, 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 have anywhere to go. Right. Um, and there are not enough beds, one, right. in the, and there are not enough dedicated beds, right? And so while there are definitely 
charities and other organizations that have beds, my my learning as I've done this in my day job is that it's not always safe for them when they don't feel safe, right? right? Because people right. You know, harm them. And so they end up riding the subway, you know, being out in the cold, just not being safe. Right. And so knit the rainbow, what we're gonna do is while we can't immediately solve the homelessness situation, right. what we can do is we can help them. And so our goal is for this year, it's our first year. And so we have a modest goal. Our goal is to collect 2,020 pieces of knitted accessories. So hats, scarves, cowls, gloves, mittens, um, anything that you, socks, yeah, we definitely need socks and we know that, that that takes longer. And so we're collecting these items because we're partnering with a few organizations here in the New York area to distribute the items. And so one of our major um, partners is the Ali Forney Center. And Ali Forney was a uh, gender nonconforming um, person who was murdered years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, a friend of his started this organization to provide shelter because if Ali had had somewhere to go, maybe he, no, they wouldn't have been out, right. uh, you know, without you know, being safe and protected. And so right. Ali Forty has several different locations, several different programs from education, you know, getting these young people back in school. Um, mm-hmm. trades, um, they mm-hmm. have a couple of, of homes, you know, um, when my company has worked with them for a number of years and we did a painting event at their B. Arthur home. So B. Arthur was a oh. fan. Wow. And, and her family has passed that on. Oh, and so, that's wonderful. Yeah. And so, um, one, one of the residents is named after her, the, the B. Arthur home. Oh, wow. There's so many other celebrities who have, you know, given t- to Ali Forney. but at the end of the day, you know, we are partnering with them to provide the knitted accessories that we hope everyone knitted, you know, handmade. So if you want to weave, if you want to crochet or whatever, we'll gladly accept it. You, you saw that picture of Austin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We had go out and buy those vacuum seal bags as because he's right right now we're new right and so he's collecting all these items in his home (laughs) i was gonna say he's vacuum sealing them because he probably has a mountain of them now right he's getting a mountain so we we, we are keeping track and more coming you know and so as we are getting we've also been also gotten a couple of um of 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 contributions from a financial perspective and that's great because now we're probably going to need a storage a storage unit to, so we can store both the yarn because we hope to you know do some programming and teach um crafting to the mm-hmm. the, the the individuals right um so we're gonna so we've been collecting yarn we've been collecting the handmade items and of course we have a donate now um button should somebody want to give from a finance perspective um so sherry said i'm gonna pop this up there great collection project for tears to you and you actually mentioned to me would we do that we're happy to do it um another thought is and i am happy to donate a bit of my time i don't know if this would work or not but i'm happy to do um an online you know knitting lesson for as many people as we can get So, and that leads me to a question, which accessory do you guys need most? Because my first thought was a scarf is easiest, but what do you need the most of? Yeah, you know, I think what we have the least of is socks. Okay. Right. And those are probably the hardest item to make for, yeah. Right. But it doesn't mean that, you know, again, so we want, you know, hats, cowls, scarf, mittens, gloves, again, anything that could keep them warm. Okay. While while we're having fun with the whole rainbow motif, things do not need to be knitted in the rainbow spectrum, right? We actually learned that it's probably best, you know, ha- have fun with color, but things that are, you know, brown, navy blue, gray, um, will last longer because they don't have access to washing, right? In case, because how do they keep it clean? Right. So, so you know, and again, while we want to not be uh there's no judgment on yarn type or yarn 
quality, but I do, for me, the things that I'm going to make, I'm going to make with a super wash yarn so that it lasts longer. Yep, yeah, yeah, that makes it's, sense. Because while I love a, a, a mohair or something, but I know with wear and tear, it's not going to last. It needs to last. It needs to last. I mean, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm, I don't, again, everyone has a different way of, of knitting that has, that can withstand the, the test of time. But I'm going to go with the super wash because I feel it's more durable. I'm going to go with, you know, fun blues, fun grays. Um, it, you know, also gender neutral colors as well. Um, and because when we give our, when we give other products, um, the, the items, our hope is that they will pick and choose what they want. Right? Okay. Based so how are they distributed? So we're working with the agencies. So California is the other one. I forget the other um, partner right now. And so we're going to give the items to the agency and okay. then the agency will give them to their clients. Got it. And I had another question. Oh. And then hold on, I, I need to pull this up because I know okay. I'm going to get wrong if I don't. No worries. You know, you get to be a certain age. Uh, I, I told you what happened to me on Monday. So mm -hmm. I had a, had a mm -hmm. big day. So we are actually doing a, a virtual gala oh, on, okay. on October 27th in okay. the Zoom. So yay. And so we're, we're partnering with out Ali Forney. And so we're doing a, so it's part of our garment drive. And so right now we're going from October 5th to November 27th okay. to collect as many garments as we can. And so we're inviting everyone to join us. And so you can follow knit the rainbow Inc on Instagram, knit the rainbow Inc, and you'll get information about our gala. You'll meet, the uh, board and our founder. Um, and so the donations are based on what you, I, I don't think we have an exact amount, but, but, but the tickets are based on what you can give. And so, you know, it's tax, it's a tax write off depending on your giving um, level each year. But we're super excited about our first gala. We're super excited to partner with Ali Forney and to collect, you know, our first. 2020 pieces maybe more that'll be That's amazing awesome. and through uh, november 27th is the first drive but yes. what happens after that like if people want to continue just We're to continue to give because the winter will will be coming right much you know i'm a game of thrones fan so winter is coming love game of thrones <laughs> winter is coming yeah. and and we don't know what the covid winter will will bring yeah right there and, is that yeah and so you know because i i'm fully aware of the under uh, of the need for the underserved when we went into to quarantine the first two things i said to my husband are two of the things that i lead at work i'm like what about the homeless right and then of course i went to the lgbtq homeless because that's right. the artist right. and then the second one i said what about people who are quarantined not in a safe place and so the other thing i lead at work is gender-based violence and making sure that we're aware and so how can we support and bring education too and so the covid winter means you know less people out right i, I would assume um and when you don't have the choice of where you go right you need to be you know protected and 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 cared for and if i again if, if the if the most that i can do or i don't know if it's the most but if something i could do is make something with love that you know wraps you up in my loves and thoughts and prayers then i hope that that, that is felt because that's what i will be knitting and thinking of. I'll, I'll be thinking of the person who will be you know wrapped up in this item during this i win. love that i love that and everybody who's watching and i will um post about this as well um please do make things and i would assume there's an address on the website to send yeah, them to so on, the, on the knit the rainbow website the address is with, you know yeah it's, everything's going to get to austin at some point but um <laughs> the address we are you know in full collection mode he's he's such a good you know spirit about it he's like look at my bed it's full of things and th that's a good problem for us to, to have that's yeah more, that's great more items that we can give out but to your point after our first drive we'll continue our partnerships. And so we'll continue to do drop-offs because again, the, 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 the number is larger than, than, than our giving of the people who need. And so we'll continue to have um, a, um, a connection 
to uh, the organization to continue to look, you know, maybe once a month, we, we have a standing date where we come and we drop off the items throughout the winter. And then once the winter is over, we start gearing up for the new year. I think that's great. And, you know, we are happy to collect here. And so if that people want to send directly, great. Yeah. If you want to bring them in, fine. Yeah. That's good too. Um, love happy to do that. So I'm excited. That. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Thank so you. I um, noticed in one of your um, Instagram posts, this, you had, um, yes. yeah. And Sandy that teaches with no. us lent this to me and I, I have had it for, Look at I know I've had it for a week and and she said um, Sandy told me it's really um, an enjoyable is not the right word but a and an, it's very readable and I was a little bit skeptical only because thing books that are people who are really great researchers aren't always the most engaging of writers and so I thought uh, okay you know we'll see and I started reading it and it's, it's, I'm only at the beginning. I've only read yeah. a little bit, but Same. it's really engaging. Very, very, very it's much. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. And really good points. Where, how far have you read the whole thing? So, no, I'm, I'm actually at the beginning as well. Okay. So, um, because I was finishing up my other book for work, which is this one. But if, I got that a, one on, um, on my Kindle or on, you know, on the Kindle really, app. You know, and he's a researcher as well, but he, te but he, you know, I really appreciate the, I appreciate the research that went into this book because as I'm reading it, I'm like, he did a lot of research yeah. to validate, right? Because um, it's really important uh, that the perspective that's presented, particularly when it's topics of race and, and, and things like that, it's you, while we can be passionate about it from our personal perspective, right? It's always great that I can support my passion with historical data, facts, and other relevant points. And he's done a great job of what I love about his book is he weaves basically, it's autobiographical. It, it, it is, yeah. It starts out like, totally from his story. Right? Yeah. It starts out from his parents' story. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because of who his parents were, it made sense that he would be that person. And one of my favorite things in his story, and we, you know, is, you know, his seventh, no, no, it wasn't even seventh grade, his third grade activist of speaking up when he saw, and he didn't even have the words. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't understand that the teacher was treating, you know, one group of students differently than the other group mm -hmm. of students. He didn't have the words, but he saw it. Right. And so when he had his little one person, you know, Stage his 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 his, his, his sitting as he says it. He said I, he didn't use those terms, but he said fair and right. Right. And and from his nine year old or eight year old perspective, those are the words that he used. And so I love that. And so it's also another great book. So I'm really you know again as somebody who um, does this work full time, I constantly have to read and challenge myself. And I can't just say that what I knew you know, at the end of the year still holds true for this moment, right? It's the evolution of learning. Um, and that's, I'm constantly learning. I'm, I'm a lifelong learner as well. Well, and I, I respect that very much. And um, I too, I like to not like to, I value learning as well. And I don't feel great about um, difficult things unless I don't feel great about moving forward with uh, through difficult things unless I have given myself the opportunity to do some learning about them. Um, yeah. Because I think if you don't have the vocabulary to discuss things, then all you end up doing is, in some cases, you can end up just spewing or stewing, and yeah. neither of those are are necessarily in the end productive. Yeah, or or you know, the worst case is doing more doing more more harm. Well, and there's that too. I, you know, it's funny because I actually posted about reading um, how to be an anti-racist and um, somebody came on and said, you know, just because you're reading a book doesn't make you, you know, any better. And I, it made me sad because the day that we put people down for seeking to learn 
is the day that everything needs to stop and we need to really take count because learning is how you grow. Listen, when you stop learning, you, you've stopped, stopped living, right? That's you true. Yeah. You challenge yourself and you're learning. You're constantly learning. Yeah. Maybe it's not these these the, theoretical or or, or 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 courageous concepts, right? They're they, again, you know, maybe it's learning how to make apple cider donuts, right? Like what, right. What, <laughs> and so and so for me, um, in addition to my knowledge base, right, I challenge myself in my knitting world. Like yeah. every, I want to learn to do something different. Like, what's the thing that scares me? Is it socks? Is it uh, um, the, the 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 provisional cast on? Is it right. a lace? There's something. So you're always I'm learning, and you should never put anyone down for wanting to learn. Um, you know, because again, as we talk about our human ability and our brain, and how you know, and how our brain is wired from a bias perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Because our brain is inundated with so many data points, we can only process a, a limited so number. And it, yeah. of that, we make these cognitive shortcuts, right? These, and so those cognitive sh shortcuts known as, 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 as blind spots or implicit bias, mm -hmm. right? So the, as we learn more about our bias, we're like, wait, I want to be better. But I realize that because I have a bias toward this, I've been showing up in this way. Right. And, and we're blind, you know, everyone has a bias. If you have a yeah. brain, you have yeah. bias. So we're not cognizant of it. And so part of one of the main biases, and there are many, is that confirmation bias. Right. And that's saying that I'm going to look for things that confirm what I already know to be true. And so when I'm presented with the thing that confirms what I already know to be true, I'm like, yes, of course, that's right. Right. One plus one is two. Yay. The, yes, that's right. Yep. One plus one is two. Or, you know, uh, you know, I'll take something like like six plus two is eight. Yes. And four plus four is eight. Yes. Right. And so everything that equals eight. Yes. But then I get something that says four plus nine is eight. And I'm like, that's wrong. Put it over there. Right. I don't take the time to figure out, well, how could four plus nine equal eight? Like, is it a negative number? Am I dividing? Is it, you know, so so what confirmation bias with the way that you the way that you overcome that is when you see information that's counter to what you believe, take a second and just think of how that might be true. I'm not saying you readjust your way of thinking, but because you suspend forming an opinion, which is what we don't do. That's right? the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. We immediately, right? And so, and so I say all that to say, when we're reading these books that introduce a way of thinking or way of being that might be different from how we've always taught mm -hmm. or thought rather, mm -hmm. or might challenge the way we, we show up, right? So now I learn about microaggressions and maybe I've been a person who has been, and, and microaggressions are those slight um, commonplace uh, ways of being and things that we say that could have a negative impact on someone else or right. it could be a bias or a, a prejudice. And so maybe I didn't know that asking someone where you're from, no, really wh where you're from. Right. right? No, really. Oh, or, or you speak English really well. Where, where did you, you know, like those things that we think are compliments, right? It's actually to that person who's asked that a thousand times, it, it puts them in, a, in an uncomfortable position. Right. So, 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 so when I learn that my behavior has been a mic has been offensive to somebody else, it's hard to sit with. And so, rather than than discount the whole notion and say, "Well, no, it's it's okay to ask someone where they are, where, where, where they're from, or 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 even worse, saying what 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 are you, <laughs> right? Like, what do you mean? What am I? I'm a human right. being. Like, right. What do you <laughs> right. What many people who are mixed race or racially a a a ambiguous say they're asked several times a week. So what, what 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 are you like trying to figure that out, right? And so for the person who said I didn't realize that that was offensive, great. So now like you know what I want to be better. And so that that's all reading and learning is is just can I show up as the best possible version of me? I'm looking at Ed said. Um... The book, here we go. I'm going to put this up because um, Sandy asked about this. The book CC um, held up was How to yeah. Be an Anti-Racist. Yeah. yeah, and I and I will say, 
um, Sandy, who was asking about that, the way that um, he writes is is markedly different from Isabel Wilkerson. Oh, yeah. Two it, it's a, it, I, I would classify it as a more dense narrative. So it's yeah. not a, it's not a, um, she almost has a lilt to her. Yeah. Like there's a rhythm to her storytelling. He is much more uh, dense. Cool. Yeah. So I will, <clears throat> I will let you in on my secret. I actually read the my books look so great because I I read I listen to it on Audible. Okay. Yep. And then I go back and then I highlight and tab and write on the parts that 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 resonated. So for me, um, also, so I've been an Audible person for a number of years. It also allows me to listen and knit. Oh, and you know, and Sandy, don't worry, I'm not going to um, highlight your book. I won't do that. <laughs> She's probably sitting there saying, don't mess up my book. Um, yeah, and I have a, a really hard time with audiobooks. It, it, the, I have a hard time with, and if you tell me directions to something, don't expect me to remember it. Not going to okay. happen. So okay. I definitely have to read it to get it, but I totally understand what you're saying. And well, for, for everybody me, who wants to, that's a good option. It's a good option. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing um, audiobooks for a while. And so for me, it's enjoyable if the if the narrator, right? So it's, it's great. Like I did um, the kind of, uh, Michelle, Michelle o Obama's book. Yep, yep. And it's her voice. And so it was great to hear her tell her story in, in her voice. But I read many years ago, the book, The Help, the movie, The, the Help, mm -hmm. told from three different people's perspective. It was narrated by three different women. And so my, my when when my friends, and again, I understand it, we're, we're different, we, we learn and we, we, we receive things differently. But when I wrote to, 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 to some of my friends, I'm like, remember certain stories that you learned as a child? Did you read the story or was it read to you? And That's then you're interesting. like, hmm. right? Because, you know, Rumpelstiltskin, all these fairy tales, like I've, you know, the, the, there were some I read and, and, and there was some, you know, someone read to me. So ah. when, when done correctly, you get so caught up in the narrator and the story. Like I was on a plane one time listening to Night by, by Eli, by Eli, Wiesel, I'm probably saying his name wrong, um, but it's about the, the the Holocaust. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And so I'm listening to it, and I'm on a plane crying. <laughs> I'm crying. Like I was so in the moment of the it story. Got, yeah, it sounds and like it was great. If, so if if the narrator is really good and the that's story the key, is good, that's the key. What's beautiful about a lot of the the um, options, you can listen, you can do a preview. Oh. I'll try it again. I mean, and I think you've hit on something. It's the narrator, like sometimes. The narrator. And then so like, I, actually for, for me, even <clears throat> um, Ibram's book, he speaks very intentional. So I had to speed up his, his speech. So I'm listening to him at a 1.2 versus a one speed because it's a little faster. You helped him get a move on. <laughs> That's funny. I don't think I realized you could do that. Oh. And then right. the last thing I'll say, and I'm not, I, I don't own stock in, 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 in Audible, but what I appreciate about with Audible is that you can, if, if, you, if you don't like the book or the narrator, you can return it. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot again. Now that I know you can like change the speed and all of that, that might be really helpful because I struggle with that, really. Yeah, and then you can go back by, by 10 seconds if you miss something, like, wait, what did he say? What's that? Okay. I'll try so, it. I'm going to report back to you. I'm going to try it again. And so the other yeah. and the other thing from a, a diversity perspective, I always encourage um, people to to look for ways to have have diversity in their life. And so I talk about the books you read and the things you, the things you watch. And so the uh, the last piece from from the audible perspective or the, the 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 audiobook perspective is because I read books from people from different parts of the world, whether it's India or Africa or mm -hmm. a Spanish uh, um, author. I love hearing them pronounce the words in their native tongue. Ah, okay. And the accent, right? So I read <clears throat> Americana um, by Chimadanda. And so like okay. her, her, her characters speak um, like, you know, with an African accent. And then there are characters who speak with a British African accent. Oh, wow. 
And so the nuance, right, from when her aunt is speaking to her, like you hear the difference in the nuance because the, the narrator does such a great job of changing the dialects. Oh. So, so, it, so it, it's less flat. That, okay. All right. You, are you sure you don't own stock? Because I think you've sold me on this. <laughs> I'm thinking I should. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's publicly traded, but go yeah, for that. But yeah. So again, I just, and, and I go back to as, as crafters, anything that allows us and because you know crafting is so zen in and of itself right so it relaxes you and that way you really are able to go into another level as you listen all right i'm gonna give it a shot again and then yeah i'll try don't, it don't do it with this book. uh well do it, do it with the novel first do i, it with the I might novel. do it with cast actually do it with cast, yes because i her already i can tell is she the one that narrates that I, I believe so. Okay, I'm going to give I it a shot with that one then. Because I, I love, already, I love the style of her writing. Um, mm -hmm. It's just very engaging. So, um, yeah. And I have to tell everybody, I don't want to let you get away without telling them. So um, she, this lady, was in uh, Women's Wear Daily. <laughs> yeah, and um, yes, and she sent me a copy of the article. I read it, and I, I thought it was great. And I thought that your, just as, as you've said today, your tying of your diversity work from your, um, as you say, the, the job that pays the bills, the one that pays you, um, to your passion is what a, what a beautiful thing to be able to tie all of that together. Yeah. I love it. So congratulations on that. That's Thank amazing. You. Yeah, I, I was so happy to, to share my story. When the reporter reached out to me or the, the, the writer reached out to me, I thought she was pitching the story. She's like, no, 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 this is fascinating. And so, you know, the story was on people in, in, in beauty who have an interesting uh, hobby or passion. And so our chief marketing uh, um, officer was like, I know someone. <laughs> and, so, and when we started talking, she was like, she, she follows me uh, on Instagram. And she goes, uh -huh. I follow you, I love it. Um, and it was just, you know, to, to your point, just an opportunity to talk about mirroring or marrying my passion for diversity at work to my passion about advancing diversity in the fiber space. And I so. think all of that is incredible. And and to be perfectly honest with you, one of the reasons I love um, your Instagram account is that while you are um, direct and forthright about issues, you are also a positive person. And so mm -hmm. you are, um, you just bring a light to a, a spot and that's it's yeah. important because there's so much vitriol right now that um you know having having people who are uh very knowledgeable and very experienced also lead the way in terms of their presentation and behavior around all of these challenging things is really really important and when you have as many followers as you and many of the other um, yeah. influencers have, it is critically important to model good behavior. You know, good handling, good leadership, good um, good energy, and I and I appreciate your energy. Thank so. you. You know, I'm, a lot of times I'll, I'll post some positive affirmation, a positive you know. Because I, I, I try to I try to start every day with an with an, an, an intention of setting my intention for the day, my, my energy for the day. Mm -hmm. I really, in, you know, while I'm a woman of faith, I do believe in the energy that you put out is important. Mm -hmm. And there's many times when I'll share something with people, and they're like, "How did you know? How did you know I needed this? This is just what I needed." I'm like, "I got to be honest. I put what I need, and in the hopes of if it serves." someone else great but it's really what i need at the moment and so i love the fact that so many people are are in alignment with that um because mm -hmm. it's so important right it's this good is, work it, you do good work there's so much out there that can yeah. take us down an other rabbit hole but you know what we have a choice and so i try to choose joy i try to choose mindfulness um and i choose it most when i'm at my lowest is when I'm going to go look for what's the mantra, what's the yeah. scripture, what's the thing that will speak to my heart to help me come out of this. And listen, we this this this, this year that is a decade. It feels like it. Yeah, right. We really need 
we really need those the, 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 those moments. And so, to your point, um, thank you because I do strive to to, you know, in my space of the world, in my effort to leave a legacy, put something into it. I do hope that what I put is is seen as as positive. Well, it's appreciated. I know by a lot of people, but for me personally, yeah, I appreciate it. So, well, this has been really fun. We can talk forever. We, we even just our our, our test run. We're like, <laughs> what tomorrow? We're doing a, 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 a check on the systems, and we're having. I I could hang out with you anytime. I really have enjoyed chatting with you. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. And we definitely are excited to be a collection point for Knit the Rainbow. And yeah, thank you for bringing it to our attention. And let's, um, you know, I'd love to connect again soon and kind of see how things are going and what you've got going. So please holler anytime, you know. You know what, I'll I'll, I'll connect you to to Austin if you want to. I would love that. I'd love to have him on. Yeah. I would love for him to be on. And you can hear great. He's such a he's such an inspiration to me. So the the second he the second he started talking, um, Lewis of uh, of Brooklyn Boyness was the one who connected us. And the second Austin started talking, I was like, yes. He was like, do you want to? No, yes. I'm I'm a yes. I love it. Yeah, I would love to. Just tell him to, you know, I'll, give me a I'll shout. Do, I'll, I'll, I'll do that part. That's perfect. Well, everybody, let's just say a big collective um, thank you to thank Cecilia you. Nelson Hurt, who is Creative CC on Instagram. And um, thank you again. And I will see you soon, I hope. Definitely. Have right. a great weekend. Thank you. You too. You take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.